around Dodge City and in the territory on West, there's just one way to handle the killers and the spoilers, and that's with a U.S. Marshal and the smell of gun smoke. Gunsmoke, starring William Conrad, the story of the violence that moved west with young America, and the story of a man who moved with it. I'm that man, Matt Dillon, United States Marshal, the first man they look for and the last they want to meet. It's a chancy job, and it makes a man watchful and a little lonely. Thank heaven you're here. Uh, Janie, what's the matter? Morning, Miss Well. Hello, Chester. Matt, I, I, I've got to talk to you. All right. Uh, Chester. Uh, you, you folks will have to excuse me. I can't be putting around the office all day. Uh, I'll be in the back if you want me. What is it, Janie? Matt, he's, he's here in Dodge City. Ed Baudry. I just saw him. He came in on the morning train. He's here? Yes. It's been four years, Matt. I'd begun to hope he'd forget. I hope he wouldn't find us. But he's come here looking for Bert to kill him. He swore he would. Oh, Matt, what are we going to do? Now, wait a minute, Jeannie. Wait a minute. Just take it easy. Now, what does Bert think about it? He doesn't know yet. He's busy at the blacksmith shop. Oh, Matt, you've got to help us. You're the only real friend we've got out here. Well, I'm supposed to maintain law and order in Dodge. That's my job, but... It doesn't leave much leeway to mix in on personal quarrels. Well, there's no quarrel. It's just that Ed Baudry's a, a hot-tempered fool. Bert never did anything to him. He married you, didn't he? Woman has a right to change her mind, Matt. Well, maybe Baudry doesn't think so. Matt, you, you... You promised me once a long time ago. Yeah. Yeah, I know, Jenny. All right, you go on home. Don't say anything to Bert. I'll talk to Baudry. Thank you, Matt. I, I... Bye, Matt. Chester. Yes, sir, Mr. John. Oh. Did Miss Wells leave? Yeah. They sure are a fine couple, the Wellses. Did you know them before they come on out west? Uh, not Bert, I... Huh? No, Mrs. Wells. Well, I guess we better drop over to the Long Branch, Chester. There's a man in town who may be planning to do some killing. Want a drink, Matt? Uh, not right now, Kitty. I'm looking for somebody. I thought he might be in here. Stranger? Yeah, his name's Ed Baudry. Oh, him. Yeah. Well, there at the bar, Matt. Third from the end, next to Tulsa Jim Nixon. Uh-huh. All right, thanks, Kitty. Come on, Chester. All right, bartender. Set up another round for the house. Yes, sir. Your name Baudry? That's right, mister. I'm Matt Dillon. I want to talk to you. Well, fine. Go ahead and talk. Uh, Tulsa, suppose you move on down the bar for a couple of minutes, huh? Well, now, Marshal, well, what's I... the idea? This man's a friend of mine. Well, you're not very particular about your friends. Go on, Tulsa, drift. Baudry, you came here to kill Bert Wells, didn't you? Did I? Well, here's some advice. You take the next train and you get out of town. Is that official? What's the charge? None yet. Murder if you go through with it. 
Murder is one thing. Calling a man in a fair fight's another thing. Audrey, I'm the law here in Dodge, and I don't see it as a fair fight. Bert's a blacksmith, and he's not used to handling a gun. You are. So I'm told. Now, who told you, Marshal? I don't know anybody here that... Wait a minute. Bert's wife, Jeannie. Yeah. I've heard Jeannie mention you. Said you knew her back in Louisville. That was before she ran off. We'll with leave her out of this, Baudry. So that is it. This isn't official. You're just doing a personal favor for an old friend. Probably a very close friend. Jeannie always did have a weakness. <laughs> All right, get up, Audrey. That was a mistake, Dylan. I'm not a blacksmith, Audrey. I'll look you up as soon as I finished with Bert Wells. If you kill Bert, you won't have to look me up. Come in. I want to talk to you, Bert. About what, Matt? Ed Baudry's in town. Baudry. Well, it was bound to happen sometime. Jeannie just happened to see him get off the train this morning, and she came and told me. She shouldn't have done it, Matt. It's not your problem. Well, maybe it is, Bert. The law doesn't like the idea of personal grudges ending up in a killing. What do you aim to do? Prevent it, if I can. And I wish you luck. You haven't worn that gun for two years, Bert. Why start now? I got no choice, Matt. You know that. You got no chance. If you let Budry call a showdown, he'll kill you. Maybe. Look, Bert, why don't you take to the prairie? Hold up for a week or so while I figure some way of running Budry out of town, huh? Would you do it, Matt? Hide out and let somebody else do your fighting for you. What I do is... That's has... beside the point, Bert. Huh? There's a law against killing, and it's Matt's job to enforce it. If you went away, there, there wouldn't be any fight. Wouldn't be much honor either, Janie. A man can't run and still call himself a man. He can run from a mad dog, and that's what Ed Baudry is. He never had any claim on me. But it appears he thought he did. Matt, you know where Baudry's staying? Well, I talked to him in the Long Branch. He probably took one of the rooms upstairs. You'd like to walk over there with me? If that's the way you want it. Oh, no, Bert, you, you... I'll get my hat. Be right with you. Matt! Matt, you've got to stop it. How, oh, Jenny? I don't know, but there must be something you can do. Yeah, the way it's shaping up, I can probably arrest the survivor. <laughs> Time to turn back, Bert. Afraid not, Matt. I should have headed out with Baudry back there in Kentucky five years ago. But Jeannie wanted to run away and avoid trouble. She was so beautiful, it was hard to argue with her. Yeah, I know. Be hard on her if anything happened to you. Life's always hard on a woman, I guess. Yeah. I see him. But don't worry, Matt. I won't draw unless he does. I was just going out to your place to call on you, Wells. I decided you'd had plenty of time to look me up. No reason to, Baudry. Most men had figured they had reason. 
Somebody in the local saloon's been telling their wife's history. Audrey, you... All right, hold it. You're fast with that gun, Dylan. Fast enough, Mr. Baudry. You make a good bodyguard. Too bad you can't ride herd 24 hours a day. I told you what to expect if you kept pushing things this way. Now use some sense. Get out of town while you're still alive. I've been in a lot of towns, Dylan, and I left them all alive. Well, so I've been planning to kill you for nearly five years. Plans don't always work out. This one will. You got till sundown. After that, I'm going to shoot you on sight. All right, Mr. Baudry, you've spoken your piece. Now move along. Well, sure, Marshal. See you later, Well. It's still a couple of hours before sundown. I think I'd like to spend them with Jeannie. I'll see you, Matt. Yeah, sure. Goodbye, Bert. Why don't you relax, Matt? You're nervous as a cat. There's nothing you can do now. Well, maybe not. Another killing. You in the middle again. Why, Matt? Why do you do it? It's a job, Kitty. Somebody's got to do it. But why you? There are other things in life if you look around for them. Well, maybe I will someday. Sure. Well, Matt, I brought my kit. All prepared. Where are the victims? No victims yet, Doc. You're jumping the gun. I understand it's going to be a real showdown. The boys at the bar are offering two to one on Baudry. Well, that's about the odds, I figure. If the shooting really starts. Well, it'll start all right. There's not a thing in the world that can be done. Yeah, Chester. What are you doing in here? I told you to watch the street, didn't I? Yes, sir, I know you did, but I guess ain't going to be no fight. What? They just found Baudry laying in the alley down the block. Somebody snuck up behind him with a hammer. He's dead. Ain't no light showing around the house, Mr. Dillon. No. And he might have skipped out. But what about his wife, though? I don't know, Chester. I can't figure any of this. It's not like Bert to pull a trigger. Hold it. Don't move. Bert? Who is it? Who's there? It's Matt. I got Chester with me. Oh. All right, Matt. Uh, I thought it was somebody else. Who, Bert? Well, you know who. Baudry, of course. Well, I guess I better take your gun. Official, Matt? Official. Well, I've got no quarrel with the law. Here. Thanks. Why did you do it, Bert? What do you mean? If it had been a gunfight, the law couldn't have touched you. The circumstances were all in your favor, but this way they'll call it murder. Now, what are you talking about? It's no use. You left a hammer line right beside his body. It's got your shop brand carved in the handle. Whose body are you talking about? Baudry. Matt, you're making a mistake. I went looking for Baudry, yeah, but I didn't find him. And I come back here. I was afraid to leave Jeannie in the house alone. I didn't do it, Matt. You're wrong. It's not up to me, Bert. It's the court's job. All I can do is take you in. I got no choice. What about Jeannie? I got to tell her. Chester will take care of it. You better if you do it, Matt. Your friend would make it easier. I, uh... I'd rather not, if you don't mind. Now, let's go. All right, Bert. Four years we've been friends, Matt. I never thought it'd come to this. Neither did I. 
And you said you didn't find any money on him. Could have been robbery. Or oh, made to look like robbery. Either way, there's nothing I can do. Now, go ahead. I'll bring you some blankets and tobacco. If you want anything else, let me know. Huh? I wish I knew how Jeannie was taking it. She'll be all right, Bert. She's a fine girl. Look out for her, will you, Matt? You know, a man's job is one thing. Friendship is another. This prairie country is rough and wild at best, and without the law, nobody could survive in it. That means putting friendship aside sometimes. But a man still doesn't forget, Bert. Yeah, I'll look out for her. Thanks, Matt. See you later. Uh, get your prisoner tucked in safely, Matt. Yeah. What about Baudry, Doc? He's dead. A blacksmith hammer makes a mighty fine weapon. At least for sneaking up behind. I can't figure Bert doing that. It's not like him. I can't figure it either. What would you say his chances are? Bad. The straws all point one way. Maybe somebody's been messing with a straw stack. Who? That's a good question, man. The court will ask it. If he ever gets there. What does that mean? Kitty came and told me a while ago that some of the boys down at the Long Branch are kind of riled up. They're talking real loose. Yeah, they're just mad because they've lost their source of free drinks. Maybe so. But you better keep your eyes open, Matt. Oh, I know that pack, Doc. They hunt in the dark and pull down stragglers, and mostly they just talk. Don't worry about it. Bert's in jail, and that's where he's going to stay. Well, uh, but if I were you, I, I'd still keep my eyes open. Matt, you here? I'm here. Yeah, hey, wait, I'll light the lamp. What were you doing sitting here in the dark? Jenny, you shouldn't have come. I, I want to see Bert. No visitors after dark is a jail rule. Rules don't have to be enforced. Well, mine do. Bert's a prisoner the same as any other prisoner. He's charged with murder. He didn't do it, Matt. Well, that's not for me to say. You know he didn't. You know, Bert, you know he wouldn't do a thing like that, sneak up behind a man in the dark. Jenny, I'm not the court. I know. And they'll believe he did it. And the night train's coming in. Hope it's not bringing in trouble. The morning train did. Matt, I want to see Bert. I told you that I... Well, you little fool. Now, Jenny, give me that gun. no. Now, I warn you, Matt, you stay back. Give me that no, gun. No, Matt, so help me. I I'll said hand it on it. <laughs> you knew I wouldn't shoot. Yeah. <laughs> now, what did you hope to gain by that? I don't know. Get burnt out, maybe. I don't know. Gentlemen. Yeah, what is it, Chester? I just come from the Long Branch. I think there's going to be some trouble. Yeah, that's what Doc said. The bunch that hangs around there is doing a lot of drinking and talking up the idea of coming over here at the jail. Oh, no. Maybe we ought to go over there and do some talking ourselves. Jeannie, you go back home and you stay there till morning. Don't worry about this. Nothing's going to happen. But, Matt, you can't handle that crowd alone. I've been handling things alone for a long time. All right, Chester. <laughs> the one who's been agging him on. He's over there at the end of the bar. Yeah, he struck up an acquaintance with Baudry when he first got off the train. Guess he figures he's an old partner by now. Come on. Matt, Matt, wait. Later, Kitty. I got some business with the boys at the bar. Well, that's what I mean. Tell us what Jim's been buying them drinks for the last two hours. They're in a pretty nasty mood. So? 
So be careful, Matt. That's all. Just be careful. Kitty, I'm the carefulest man you know. Supposedly. But what kind of a law is it that lets a man sneak up behind somebody in the dark and murder him in cold blood? I don't know, Tulsa. You tell me. Dylan. Now, don't let me interrupt you. You were doing fine. And this is quite an audience you've got. All the panhandlers, bums, and barflies, and dodge. That's quite a collection. Calling names won't change the facts. What facts? That friend of yours, Bert Wells, that sneaking, cowardly murderer. That's for the court to decide, Tulsa. The court. He'll turn him loose. They'll work hand in glove with you. Tell him we're not going to stand for it. All right, shut up! So you're not going to stand for it, huh? Now just what are you planning to do? You'll find out in due time. Bartender, set him up again, all around. Now you've turned into quite a free spender, Tulsa. I never knew you to... Well, a double eagle gold piece. You mind if I take a look at it? It's good. Don't worry about that. Where did you get it? That's my business. So you're the one who killed Baudry. Huh? That's a lie. I thought robbing him was just a cover-up, but it wasn't. There aren't many double eagles around Dodge. Baudry had a lot of them. And now you. Where would you get a pocket full of gold pieces, Tulsa? Wells killed Baudry. That blacksmith hammer was lying right beside him. Yes, right where you left it. Just as Jim came into my husband's shop late this afternoon, his horse had thrown a shoe. He had plenty of chance to steal that hammer. She's lying. Where did you get the gold, Tulsa? I, I won in a poker game last week when the trail herd was in. Tulsa, you're under arrest for murder. Oh, no, you never take me. <laughs> Doc, you better get up on inquest. Tell them how it, Matt. You never give me any chance to practice on live people. Well, you wouldn't know what to do with them, Doc. Well, I, I, I do get fewer complaints this way. Matt... Matt, does this mean Bert's free? You shouldn't have come here, Jeannie. Yeah, he's free. Chester will go with you over to the jail and let him out. Oh, thank you, Matt. Thanks for everything. You told me one time in Louisville that... Louisville? Well, that was a long time ago. A long way off. Goodbye, Jeannie. Goodbye, Matt. What's it all about, Matt? What's anything all about, Kitty? You knew her before, didn't you? Misses out on things by drifting. And I told her then that uh, if she ever needed help, she could call on me. Well, she called, and you helped her. I guess. Well, anyway, that's that. Matt. Yeah, Kitty. When are you going to help yourself? Gunsmoke by Les Crutchfield, with editorial supervision by John Meston.